Welcome to the Liebenstert Higher Level 2011 paper, Tabular Statement Question. So we start off by listing off all of our assets and all of our liabilities on the left hand side as of the 1st of the 1st, 2010. So as you can see, land and buildings were 550,000 with minus 11 in for depreciation. Vehicles were 38,000 with minus 20,000 for depreciation. Equipment, 10,000 and minus 1,000 for depreciation. Our stock was 80,000 as was our debtors. Our provision for bad debts is 4,000 and that also goes in as a minus. Then we move on to our total liabilities. Share capital 440,000 shares issued so far at a premium of 20,000. Our P&L balance at the start of the year was 170,500. Creditor amounts 65,000. Bank overdraft 24,000 expenses due 2500 giving us a total of 772000 for both assets and liabilities and so we move on to january in january we are told that more limited decided to revalue land and buildings to 700000 this includes land it says at 90000 so that's an increase of 150000 and we get rid of all depreciation so plus 11000 for that that in total is 161000 as a revaluation reserve Next we move on to February and we're told that in February More Limited bought an adjoining business which included the following assets and liabilities. First of all land 200,000, equipment 30,000, debtors 8,000 and we're told that it was paid for by issuing 180,000 ordinary shares at 36,000 premium which is 20%. Creditors were also 40,000 which means that we paid a total of 256,000 euro for the business. The difference between what we paid and what the business was valued at is 18,000 and this is called goodwill. In April we need to bring the provision for bad debt up to 7% of debtors. Now debtors is 88,000 and 7% of that is 6,160. Well the provision for bad debt is already 4,000 so this is an increase of 2,160. Of course this goes in as a minus and also as a liability it decreases our profit so it goes into the P&L as a minus also. In May a vehicle which had cost 25,000 was traded in against a new vehicle which cost 35,000. That's a net increase of 10,000 euro. We record the increase in the vehicles but we also get rid of the depreciation relating to the vehicle we sold. That gives us a net value for May in total assets of 15,500. We made a profit on the trade-in of 500 and we paid 15,000. In June we received a bank statement which told us that we received 4,500 to cover 9 months rent receivable in advance from the 1st of June and also that we paid 1,500 by direct debit to cover advertising for the year ended 31st of the 3rd 2010. So we put 4,500 into our bank and 1500 has to come out of our bank. Now that 1500 comes out of our bank and into expenses due and the 4500 which came into our bank was with regard to rent receivable. We'll deal with both of these figures at a later stage when we come to the year end but the net value of this transactions is zero for assets and zero for liabilities so far. In July we received €720 euro from somebody who owed us €900 euro but had been previously written off as a bad debt. So let's reinstate the bad debt of €900 and that increases our debtors by €900 and also it increases our P&L because of bad debts recovered by €900. Now they've only paid us €720 so they still owe us the €180 which we must record. This particular customer then bought another €440 euro worth of stuff from us. So we reduce our stock by 440 euro and increase the debtor by 440 euro. This balances out for assets and liabilities as 180 euro. In August goods which had cost 500 and were sold for 600 were returned to us. So what we do is we put back in 500 euro worth of stock into, into stock and we reduce our debtor by 600. We also record the fact that we did not make 100 euro profit which we thought we previously did. However, we did charge a restocking charge 
So we're not reducing the debtor's fee by the full 600, we're only reducing it by 570, and therefore we didn't lose the full 100, we only lost 70 from our profit and loss. This gives us total assets, total liabilities of minus 70. In September, a creditor who was owed 800 by More Limited accepted equipment, the book value of which was 700, but which had cost 1200. So, we reduce our equipment by 1200, and we also get rid of the depreciation relating to that equipment, which is 500. So reduce equipment by 1200, and add 500 to cancel off 500 of the depreciation. Now, that means, because it was full settlement, that we no longer owe 800 euro to the creditors, so we reduce the creditors by 800, but that means that we got a discount received of 100, and discount received increases our profit and therefore goes in as a plus in the P&L, giving us a balancing figure of minus 700 for both assets and liabilities. In October, we paid a 5 cent on each of the 620,000 issued shares. That means we paid money, 31,000 from the bank, and this dividend payment reduces our profit and loss figure by 31,000. So the net result is zero on the assets and zero on the liabilities. In November, we issued our remaining 80,000 shares. We received 100,000 for them, so that's a share premium of 20,000. So we record share capital 80,000, share premium 20,000, and we show a receipt of 100,000, which reduces our overdraft, in the bank. The net result of this for assets and liabilities is zero. So in December, we have to charge depreciation on buildings at 3% of book value to be calculated from the date of valuation and the date of purchase. So to start off with, we had 700,000 euro worth of land and buildings minus the 90,000 which represented land, leaving us with 610,000 euro at 3%, but for 11 months, the remaining 11 months of the year is 18,300. Plus the February buildings, which were 200,000 at 3%, which is 6,000, multiplied by 11 twelfths of the year, which is 5,500. So in total, that gives us 23,800. And then we move on to vehicles. Vehicles is a bit more straightforward because we are told that the straight figure for vehicles for depreciation is 25,000. Both of these depreciation charges act to reduce our P&L figure and both therefore go into the P&L as a minus. The two remaining figures refer back to the June payments. So, first of all, advertising due of 1500, 9 twelfths of which apply to this year, leaving 375 as prepaid towards next year. The second figure refers to the 4,500 rent received, 7 ninths of which, 3,500, were used this year. So we've we have increased our profit because of rent received by 3,500 and have a prepaid amount minus 375 to the P&L for advertising due. The net effect for assets and liabilities is minus 48,800 for both assets and liabilities. All that remains is to add up horizontally from left to right all of our assets and liabilities to give us our total figures as you can see on the right hand side. Thanks for watching and for more videos visit mystudymate.ie